Hey, this is Mr. Sorensen, and today we're going to take a look at this really cool machine right here called the joiner. Now, the joiner is a simple machine. There's not too much to it, but the, the, the joiner is the most dangerous machine in this classroom. So let's take a look at all the ins and outs, the parts, and the pieces of the joiner. So the first thing I want to show you here is this tool panel and on most of the machines that you see here at Royal you're going to notice there's a tool panel. This is a critical piece of woodworking. If you have a shop in your garage you owe it to you and your children and your grandchildren to put a tool panel on every machine. And the reason you want to do that is because when you get down to cutting out a piece of material you want to have things like push sticks readily available to use. If you get in the midst middle of a cut here on a joiner and you realize I can't find any kind of push device, you're much more likely to try and just wing it and see if you can get through it without using any safety device. And that right there creates enormous amounts of injury. So by creating ahead of time, before you ever start using this equipment, if you build uh, tool panels and put them on every machine, then no matter when or where you are in that cut, you always have tools, push sticks, clamps, things needed immediately to help you and uh, safely get through the cut that you're working on. So please note, we have those on these machines. On the tool panel here is uh, two push sticks or push devices and then this big push block. So a joiner is made up of just a few simple parts. Back here is where we're going to start. And this is called the end feed table. A piece of wood is going to start here, moving its way towards the blade. The blade is right here in the middle. And the blade is, this is a helical blade. That means it's got lots of little teeth. And they're, they're actually mounted in a circular uh, form around the circumference of the big piece of steel in there. Um, that is all covered by a guard that's going to help to keep your hands or anything else out of that blade while you're working on it. Then we have an outfeed table over here to the left side. So we have an infeed table and an outfeed table. The outfeed table is set just a tiny bit higher than the infeed table. So as the infeed table, as the board crosses the blade and a little bit is cut off, then when it meets the outfeed table, that little bit has been accounted for and it's able to pick up that board at its new size and move it perfectly straight across here without the board tilting. Connecting the two is the fence in the middle and that fence should be set at a right angle at 90 degrees so that we can get a nice square edge on the board. The primary thing that we use the joiner for is to clean up edges of boards. Now, there's also a, a, a need to use the joiner to work on the face of a board if you have to make the face of the board flat. You cannot flatten the face of a board in a planer. At least you can't do it very well. If you have a board that does not have a flat face, it's got a crook in it or a warp to it, in order to get that all out of there and still be able to use the board, you have to join the face. Now, we're limited on our joiner because our joiner is only eight inches wide. So we can only join pieces of wood up to eight inches. Now there's two wheels here in the front and there's some locking uh, levers in here. So on the end feed table, this wheel right here is the end feed height adjustment hand wheel, the end feed height adjustment hand wheel. And I'm only going to turn that if I loosen up all the locking devices that hold that infeed table where it's at. Over here, I have another. This is the outfeed height adjustment hand wheel. These have to be set depending on what I'm trying to join. A joiner has to be precisely set in order for this to work. Otherwise, I'm going to make a mess out of the board. Instead of making a board with a flat edge, I'm going to start to make a board that does not have a flat edge. And so 
these have to be really precisely set. I want to leave them there. And we also, uh, one of the things we don't want to do is we don't want to come up and rest ourselves on the joiner. I never want to sit on the joiner because doing that is going to put undue stress on the in feed or the out feed table. And literally we could get it to tilt. And once this table tilts, we're not going to be able to uh, make a flat board anymore. We got to go back in and readjust the whole thing. So we want to avoid that. Well, we're on the other side of the joiner here, and you can see the on and off switch. Notice that you've got this little on switch buried in this giant off switch. There's the obvious reason, right? We're less concerned about turning it on than we are about quickly being able to turn it off if we get into a jam. And that works great. Uh, I would always recommend big paddles for any of your tools. You want the off switch easy to hit. And this tends to be right at your hand or your knee level where you could get to it if you notice things were... Uh, not looking good. Also, this particular brand has a nice special feature. Uh, once you hit it and turn it off, that it's not going to come back on until you hit the on and off. The, you have to hit the off paddle again, so you have to hit it twice. Um, so you can't accidentally bump into it and turn it on. Also, here on our on in feed table, we have a scale, like a little ruler right here. So this is where I would do all my setup and adjusting so I know exactly how much wood I'm going to uh, join off the edge of my stock. So here I am behind the joiner and I'm looking down, here's my guard covering the blade, but in the back, right here in the center of the joiner, directly behind the fence, is sort of the control panel of this fence that allows me to adjust the fence so that it tilts or is at a right angle. Uh, it lets me move the fence forward and backwards in case I have a specialty cut I want to make. So let me show you some of the parts that are right here in this complicated control panel for our joiner fence. So this is the blade width adjustment handle and this is the blade width locking handle. If I loosen the handle, I can adjust this hand wheel and it will either widen the space available on the table or move the fence over and make that a little smaller. When I get it to the place that I want it, then I'm going to take my blade width or my, uh, my fence width adjustment locking handle and lock it back so that now that's set. The next thing I would do in this process of setting the machine up is I'm going to adjust the squareness of the fence. That's a critical piece of using a joiner. So I'm gonna grab for that a tri-square. I'm gonna set the tri-square on the table and put it right up against my fence. And I should see the fence sit perfectly flat against the blade of the tri-square. Now, in this case, it's, it's not flat. So I'm going to need to do some adjusting. And for that, I'm gonna come over here to the hand wheel on this side and grab the fence tilt lock. As I, as I get my fence into square, I'm going to grab the fence tilt lock handle and loosen it up. And you can see the, the fence will move left and right. It will tilt when I do that. And now I'm going to bring my tri-square in and I'm going to adjust it so that the tri-square is sitting flat on the table and that fence is sitting perfectly flat up against the blade. Now I'm going to come back to my fence tilt lock lever and I'm going to lock that. And I'll come back and just check it one more time. That looks pretty good. I'll come down to this end. That looks pretty good. My fence is now very square to the tabletop. That's going to ensure that when I go and join a piece of stock, my first face and my first edge will be perfectly square to one another. The key to that is a good tri-square and a square fence. Well, here I am tucked in behind the joiner, down here behind the bandsaw, and I'm here to show you this door. So if I turn this knob and open this door, what I'm going to find in here is loads and loads and loads of sawdust, right? 
this is where all the sawdust comes out. So uh, also what I would find in here is the motor as well as the, uh, the belts. So with all this sawdust caked in here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave the, the door shut. But you get the idea. Down here in the base is where we're collecting sawdust and we've got our motor and our belts housed. I think I'll just put that right back where it came from. Now right here, <clears throat> we're looking again at the base of the, uh, the joiner and notice that like most big machines, nice machines, we have a dust collection port. And the dust collection port should have a gate. That's going to allow us to either turn this off or open it. And then it's connected to a, a large dust collector system that will help us suck all of this sawdust being generated by this joiner out of the shop. So we're not having to stumble over it. We're not having to clean it up off the floors. And most importantly, we're not having to breathe it. Well, so there's our dust collection port. Here's the door into the back that allows us to gain access to the motor and the belts. And then above that, that bright orange thing is just a guard. There's a belt that's going to run up to the jointer knives themselves. And again, on a really nice machine, all the parts that move that you could get badly hurt on are guarded. And so that's a guard, the belt guard, that's keeping you from reaching back there or reaching under there and putting your hand into the moving belt, which is attached to the blade. So down inside between the in feed and the out feed table, we have our blade and you can see that twist that's in that blade and mounted on each of those little sections. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine teeth, 10 teeth in there. And so this is called a helical blade. It's a much better cut, a really fine, clean cut. Um, and so that's the kind of blade that we have here, but it's also very dangerous. So for the in feed table and the out feed table this right here these are locking um, knobs and locking handles that lock that that in feed table in the right spot if you want to change an in feed table or an out feed table it is so critical that you undo all of the knobs before you try to crank the handle if you try cranking the adjustment handle and uh, you haven't unlocked all of this stuff you're just going to destroy the infeed table mechanisms that hold it tight and hold it really flat and now you'll make it really difficult to ever use this joiner it just won't be able to you'll never be able to get it back to where it's perfectly flat and you can make good cuts so while they just seem like minor little things these locking uh, handles all over the joiner are a critical part of it making all your adjustments correctly so that the joiner will do the precise kind of work it's intended to do. Well, I'm at the front of the joiner and I'm, as I'm looking around in here, once again, I see some little locking mechanisms. They things are all over this joiner. So take a look over here, what I found. So here again, I've got another locking handle. And if you look back in here, here's a set screw that is um, helping to lock. This is the out feed table. But both tables have the same um, locking mechanism and set screw. So there are just all over this machine are little locking mechanisms and then double locking mechanisms to make sure everything stays perfectly locked in and flat and square so we can get precise work out of this machine. All right, well, let's take a look at how we would use this joiner safely. I'm going to start with my board on the in feed table. I'm going to push it slowly across the cutter knives that are right here in the middle underneath the guard. Here's the key to good safe jointer usage. I never pass my hand directly over the cutter knife. I never pass my hand directly over the guard. I'm always going to reach my hand over it. If I'm reaching over it, it's very unlikely that my hand will go into it. The only way I'm going to cut my hand on that joiner is if I pass my hand directly over the cutter blade. So as I push this board across the cutter knives, when I get to the blade, I'm just simply going to reach around the blade 
and pick up the board on the other side of the blade. And then I get down here to the end and I'm gonna reach over the blade and I'm gonna finish my cut like that. And in doing that, I'm gonna go a long way at keeping my fingers out of this joiner knife. So let me do that with the power on so you can see what that looks like and what it sounds like. the joiner put a beautifully flat smooth surface right into that edge of that board that's what we want to do with the joiner now if the jo if the piece of wood is too short if the piece of wood is lower than the fence what I might do is use my push sticks instead of my hand all right so if I have a piece of wood shorter than my fence, I'm going to use my two push sticks instead of my fingers to try to push this through. Once again, a successful cut, nice, smooth surface. Now, the last thing I can do on a joiner is I can cut the face and if this board was warped so when I put it on the table I could not get it to sit flat then the only way to make that surface flat is on a joiner now when I do that I'm gonna put that board on its face you can see my fingers are three quarters of an inch away from that blade way too close for my comfort level so what am I gonna do I'm gonna reach down here on my tool panel and I'm gonna grab my push block this is going to put a lot of wood between me and that blade as I push the, blade, the board across to flatten and straighten the face of the board. So let me show you what that looks like. Now, what you're going to notice is every single time I push the board across this joiner, I always push the piece of wood past the guard so that the guard closed before I stopped what I was doing or before I picked up my board. I never want to stop when the guard is open and access the piece of wood or move the piece of wood or stop what I'm doing. Much too dangerous. I always move it all the way past the guard, let the guard shut, and then I can stop access my piece of wood, turn the machine off, whatever it is I need to do. And now I've got a really nice flat smooth face and it should be really perpendicular to that edge. There's one thing I never cut on a joiner and that is end grain. No matter how big or wide the piece is, I never turn a board this way and cut end grain on the joiner. The joiner would be like a giant router bit and the router bits hitting that and it's going to want to just chip that last little bit of end grain off and it's also possible that as it does that that piece of wood flies out of my hand and does a kickback the other thing that i don't do is i don't join wood less than 12 inches long 12 inches is the minimum length of wood that we would want to join on here um, Little pieces can have a kickback. Little pieces could just get thrown out of your hand. This is a giant motor and a big blade and that little piece can be shot out of there. So 12 inches is the minimum length of board we're going to use on our joiner. And right here on the fence, there's a yellow line painted so that you can just check your board against it. That board is bigger than the yellow line. I'm free to join it on there. Now, let me show you one last thing. Here's why I say the joiner is the most dangerous tool in our shop. When I pick up the sawdust, when I pick up the scraps that come off a joiner, that's what they look like. If I were to cut my finger on the bandsaw, I'd probably cut it clean off. I could take that finger, take it to the hospital, and they could put it back on. But if you cut your finger and it looks like that, there's nothing to reattach. 
So the joiner, I say, because of that, the joiner, I say, is the most dangerous tool in our shop. We need to give it a lot of respect, but when we do, we can use the joiner with confidence and become better woodworkers at the same time. Hope you enjoyed our little tour of the joiner today. See you next time when we look at another machine.